ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله فصلى الله عليه صلاه وسلاما يلقان بمقام سيد الانبياء وامام المرسلين Dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Quran wants us to do our best in reminding ourselves of Him and to be conscious of Him watching us. Allah says in the Quran, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu ittaqu allaha haqqa tuqatih Believers, fear Allah as He should be feared. And if you remain on this situation and that status of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the day you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you inshallah guarantee an honorable death and a state of Islam and that's why Allah continues the ayah by saying وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ and try your best to end your life in a state of sub submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a state of Islam uh, in this khutbah today I'll be talking about a concept in psychology that has been floating around in a lot of that culture, the concept of a best self, the best version of yourself. How would that best self look like? Usually people remember this after you die. After someone dies, they will start writing a eulogy. This person was so kind, this person was so generous, this person was very smart. They start, or when they, of course, when they retire, they remember the highlights of their life. To make it relevant to the youngsters among us, if you are watching a highlight reel about a, an athlete, someone who's a very good in soccer, and best, some like a star, a LeBron James or Ronaldo or Messi, where they watch a two minute or one minute video about their best goals, best passes, most awesome moves. And this highlight reel usually, no matter how big and great the player is, usually it's limited. But what happens is that people think that this is what all what, was, what this player was about. This best block shot, the three points. There are moments where they were at their best self. And when it comes to our situation as normal human beings who are not athletes, who are not superstars, if I were to ask you, how would the best version of yourself look like? In terms of your uh, school or knowledge, or even your work, your performance, your smile, your social life, how does your best self look like? And are you trying your best to maximize, to build on these moments or not? You know, those athletes, they know that the actual self they have is very limited. They know their shortcomings more than anyone else. But the more they play that video in their head, the more they are trying to push themselves towards the best version of themselves. And we as believers, we have our spirituality and our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the way we deal with other human beings and the way we, you know, handle our situations in this life, we are asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to maximize our life and try to be the best versions of ourselves. And we have a recipe, we have a formula, we have an advice in the Quran about how to maximize your performance, how to be the best version of yourself. It's a very short ayah from Surah Al-Mulk, Surah Al-Mulk chapter number 67, ayah number two. We had a Quran halaqa in this masjid in Ramadan where we discussed Surah Al-Mulk in full details. And we're continuing this halaqa, so if you need more information, see me after Salat, inshallah ta'ala. So we discussed Surah Al-Mulk in a very like detailed way. And in this surah, in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the purpose of life and he's giving us very clear advice three steps to become the best version of yourself in any field that you choose whether it's your job whether it's your reading whether it's your social skills whether it's your art whether it's your poetry whether it's your drawing any version anything that you aspire to be the quran is helping you to, be, to become the best version of yourself allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عمله وهو العزيز الغفور. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, very rough translation. Allah is telling us that it is He who created death and life only to test you. Which one among you is better in deeds? And He is the Almighty, the forgiving. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Recipe of three steps to become the best version of yourself. So starting with the first one, it's positive reflection on death and the afterlife. Reflecting on the mortality of human beings, on our death, in a very positive way. Allah did not say, Allah didn't say that he created life and death. He said death before life. And scholars have many interpretations. Why did he put death before life? Some of them because we were dead before and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us to life. You were dead. We were lifeless sperm that got out of the body of the, of the father, got into the body of the mother. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that sperm, subhanahu wa ta'ala, ahsanul khaliqeen, created a whole complete baby out of that sperm, out of that lifeless sperm. So we were dead. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us to life. We were like a seed that was lifeless. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planted that seed and then you have, mashallah, a whole tree. The origin of all life is death and that's why Allah said, Allati khalaq al wal hayata. Other scholars mention that death was mentioned before life because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's a very powerful reflection on the ayah, that because Allah is referring to this life that we live in as death. Because in this life we experience death every day. We are tasting death every day, every time we breathe, every day we wake up in the morning, our body it turns to become stronger at a peak point in our life, and then our body becomes weaker. Our bodies will, in, will disintegrate and basically disappear in the earth after we die. But our bodies now are getting weaker and weaker every day. So this life that we refer to as life, Allah said, Allah is referring to it as death. Because we taste death every single day. Our life is being shortened every single day. And Allah is talking about the afterlife as al-haya. In another ayah, Surah Al-Ankabut, وَإِنَّ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةَ لَهِيَ الْحَيَوَانِ The life is the afterlife, not this life. This life is a temporary period. And that's why if you're facing situations in this life, struggles, calamities, pressures, it is actually a temporary life. And Allah says, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ Why is reflecting on death is important for our productivity? It's important when we look at death in a positive way, not in a negative way. Sometimes the Islamic rhetoric, when we talk about death, is to give away our worldly assignments or homework or, 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 or uh, give away and, and become dis, uh, you know, separated from this life just because we're thinking about the afterlife. And that's not true at all. Actually, in psychology, I was researching this theory. They call it the terror management theory, in which they are trying to study how do human beings behave when they are reminded about their mortality. They even made some, a lot of tests on basketball teams in, the high, in high school where they had shown one of the teams pictures or surveys or questions that would remind them about their mortality. And they were trying to examine how would this affect their performance, their teamwork, their sportsmanship, their you, know, you know, how much they run, how much they score. And on average, all the teams that showed, that were shown, that were reminded about their death, showed a considerable, statistically significant difference in their performance. Because they are reminded about their mortality, that you should leave a legacy. And subhanAllah, our minds work in a very interesting way. The more we are reminded about death in a positive way, the more productive we are. The more serious we should be in our work. The more serious we should be in our studies. The more we take exercise personally, seriously, and this is how the Prophet وسلم, laid out a very interesting hadith where he said, وسلم, Constantly remember the destroyer of all pleasures, which is death, not to make your life pessimistic and sad and depressed. No, so that you are a happier person. You are a more productive person. 
you are a more positive husband or wife or son or daughter or parent because you are you know that this life is short الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم the first step in becoming the best version of yourself positive reflection on that then moving on to the next part of the ayah and the ayah has so much beauty in it subhanallah الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم to test you أيكم أحسن عملا who among you is better in deeds normally translated as or mistranslated as which one among you is best in deeds? And that's wrong. Because Allah did not say, أَيِّكُمْ الْأَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Who is the best? The idea of better versus the best. Islam does not want you to be the best, but wants you to improve, wants you to be better. And since many brothers and sisters in this community are coming from immigrant mentalities, where we have this idea back home in the Middle East or probably in other parts of the world, where you have to be the best. Otherwise, you're worthless. You have to be the best in your class, the best in your school. Otherwise, you're worthless. And this makes, causes our children to be one of two. Either you are the first in your classroom and you become extremely arrogant and you feel that you got it. You're in high school and you, خلاص, you figured it out. So you're not willing to accept any advice. And the other people who, have, who were not the best their parents keep on reminding them how, how horrible they are, how terrible they are. So they give it up. You know what? I'm not the best, so I might as well be a loser since my parents are telling me I'm a loser. And if I'm not the best in my school, I might as well not be the best in religion and my relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they start saying, you know what? Let me give it away. Let me give up on our spirituality. In my relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I made that sin, so let me enjoy my life and forget about my hereafter. That's not true. The idea of the best is not an Islamic concept. It's just for your parents to show off who's smartest. And even sometimes, it, it may penetrate Quranic education. My son is a Hafid of the Quran. As though the Hafid of the Quran is immune from sinning. Allah wants you to be better, not necessarily the best. Ayyukum ahsanu amala. Ayyukum ahsanu amala also shows that there are priorities in life. There are good things to do and there are better things to do in your life. And there are bad things to avoid and there are very terrible things to avoid. So we as believers, we should realize, put first things first. Understand what are the big rocks in our lives that we should focus on. Ayyukum ahsanu amala. So we as believers, we should start doing some kind of a time management situation where we're trying to put priorities. Tomorrow is a weekend for many of us. And we should reflect, okay, what are the most important deeds? Brothers, can you come to the front? A little bit, Jazakumullah khair. We should start reflecting, how can I make tomorrow worth? How can I make today worth it? What are the deeds that I will perform today before Friday ends? And tomorrow, and the weekend, so that my weekend is worth it. So that I have done my best, or my, the, uh, the better version of myself, so that, uh, inshallah ta'ala, this weekend will be ahsanu amala. I'm improving towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will never become the best, but you can always, com com you know, you, you, can, you can always go and in a competition, compete with yourself, and try to be the better version of yourself. Ayyikum ahsanu amala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes the ayah in a beautiful verse. وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْغَفُورُ Connect us to the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Asma Allah al-Husna. So let's go back. The first step in realizing the best version of yourself, reflect on that in a positive way. Reflect on how life is short and make sure you make the best out of your life. Number two, prioritize your deeds and try not to compare yourself to others, but to be the best version of yourself without comparing with others. أحسن عملا. Number three, connect to the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Asma Allah al husna And these names are very specific, well chosen for this context. Because Allah is telling us, وَهُوَ Aziz. Al Aziz is the Almighty. Al Aziz is the source of authority. Al Aziz subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is full of strength and power subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al Aziz is the one who is going to give you strength to become the best version of yourself. Al-Aziz is the one who will empower you every day in the morning. 
even if you have tons of reasons to be depressed and sad, and you look at your friends in social media and you think they have figured it out only because they are showing the highlights of themselves, not how miserable their life is. And you look at them and you are down and down. You need Al Aziz. You need to connect to the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al Aziz, who's going to give you Izzah. Because honor and dignity can only be attained through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by Allah, not by any worldly measure. Not by your PhD or MD or MBA, not by your car, not by your followers on social media, Al Aziz from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah concludes the ayah by saying, Al Aziz, Al Ghafoor, the forgiving. Because let's be honest, you might be empowered, I'm gonna, I'm gonna live the best version of myself, and then you fall short, and you commit mistakes, and you mess up, and all of us sin. And Allah is reminding us, He's Al Ghafoor, the forgiving. Because if you mess up, if you do mistakes, if you fall into sins, it's okay. You can always get back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's never too late. You are not worthless as your parents or your neighbors or your social media is telling that you are worthless because nobody is following you. No. Allah is al ghafur Allah is the forgiving. So again, the recipe, the blueprint, the advice how to become the best version of ourselves in our deen and in our dunya. Number one, positive reflection on death. Number two, make sure that you are doing better deeds and you're improving every day, even if you are not the best. And number three, connect with the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Aziz, the Almighty, the source of authority, Al-Ghafoor, the forgiving. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us improve every day. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to connect us to Him. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us if we fall short in our mistakes and shortcomings. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروه فيا فوز المستغفرين الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين sisters and brothers Allah سبحانه وتعالى is giving us is empowering us is motivating us that we should become the best version of ourselves. Each one of us in this room has a special talent, has a special deed, has an awesome skill that will bring him or her closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are not to be judged on the same scale. Allah wants us to become the better versions of ourselves. Of course, this is after doing the fara'id, the five prayers. Nobody can say, I can do like four out of five. No, you should do the fara'id of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But after the fara'id, we all compete in our lanes and we try to become the best version of, version of ourselves. Now, on the day of judgment, we will come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a lot of bad deeds and with some moments, back to the highlight real example, where we were truly the better versions of ourselves. We, tr we tried above and beyond to have a very good sajda, a very awesome moment of connecting to the Quran, an awesome charity that we have given and nobody knew about it. A piece of art, a project that we led and that served the Muslim community. Guess what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of his mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala, not because of his justice, his mercy, not because of our deed. Allah tells us that in the afterlife, Allah says, لِيُكَفِّرَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ أَسْوَأَ الَّذِي عَمِلُوا So that Allah will delete, will erase, will expiate the worst deeds that they have done. He'll delete them. It's easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَجْزِيَهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ الَّذِي كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Back to the words أَحْسَنُ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا And Allah will reward them with the best deed. Allah, imagine Allah on the Day of Judgment overlooking many dark moments that you are so ashamed of. These moments when you were weak and you were, you were a very terrible person that you yourself admitted, okay, you know what? It's my fault 100%. Allah out of His mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you don't challenge Him, if you don't try to brag about the sin, if you are very thoughtful about that moment and you ask Allah for forgiveness, Allah says, Allah will forgive these terrible moments in their deeds. And Allah will reward them with the best deed that they were doing. Because Allah is more, is more generous than you think. And Allah is not waiting for you to sin to it. Khalas. End it for you. Allah is so merciful and so forgiving. Ahkam al hakimin Arham al rahimin Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's after this khutbah reflect on our lives 
reflect on what can you offer to this world. Reflect on the talents and the gifts that you were given and go ahead to your school, to your lab, to your office, to your business, to your family, to your parents, to your children, to your siblings and become the best human being, the best worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best Muslim you can be. If you mess up, he is Al-Ghafoor. If you are trying your best, he is Al-Aziz. He is trying to test you which one among you is better indeed. And remember that life is short so that you don't have a lot of time, but inshallah, you can make it. Allahumma aghfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa ansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma a'inna likay nuhassina a'malana ya rabbal alameen. اللهم تب علينا لنتوب اللهم ارزقنا توبة نصوحة لا ننقدها أبدا وألزم قلوبنا سبيل الاستقامة لا نحيد عنها أبدا اللهم انقلنا من ذل المعصية إلى عز الطاعة اللهم أغننا بحلالك عن حرامك وبطاعتك عن معصيتك واغننا بفضلك عن من سواك اللهم أعنا على أن نغير ما بأنفسنا حتى تغير ما بنا اللهم غير حالنا وحال المسلمين إلى أحسن يا رب العالمين اهدنا واهد بنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى واهد الناس على أيدينا اللهم ولي أمورنا خيارنا ولا تولي أمورنا شرارنا وارفع مقتك وغضبك عنا ولا تؤاخذنا بما فعل السفهاء منا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة تنعن الأنشاء والمنشاء